the book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 32. Take not pleasure and much good cheer, neither be tied to the expense thereof. Okay, first and foremost, I like to give infinite honors and prayers to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rikah, Kodash, the honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to the audience that's pushing the truth and sincerity. And Lord willing, this video be edifying, first and foremost to the whole elect, then to those that cleave to the body. And in today's lesson or topic, I just want to send out some exhortation to Akim, all right, that, uh, of course, the body first, then to those that cleave to it, about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, it's a saying that's um, widely used amongst the Akim and the brotherhood, but, you know, today I just want to go into depth with it because the, the times that's pretty much in front of us as we see the end unfolding and prophecy unfolding, we see the magnitude, all right, or, or the, the severity of our walk, you know, right there in front of us, man. Because, you know, this is the, the, the approach where, the, where approaching, we're approaching a part of the walk where, you know, it's about to, you know, it's about to be a test to your, uh, a test of your sincerity to the Lord, man. That's why it says on the screen, when God wants you to grow, he makes you uncomfortable. So this part of our growing into judges and kings and the earth, man, you know, to reign and rule in the kingdom of heaven, man. This is the only route. All right. And exhortation is not needed. Is um exhortation is uh is uh extremely needed in the body, man, for a continuation because this thing is a continuation, man. It's not something you just, you know, AI joined and, you know, that's it, man. I got my crown. All right. Now, the Lord want to see if you really about being refined. You know, we could read the scriptures or he refined a man as gold. But are you about being, are you about going through getting beat up? All right. Uh, hit up against the wall that you may shine, man. All right. This is, this, you know, this is the ultimate walk. That the Lord have blessed us to be a part of. So, you know, you got to uh, embrace the walk. All right. And sometimes we, em we embrace things that's uncomfortable for us, man. All right. In this walk, whether it be, you know, things we probably weren't accustomed to doing. All right. Hey, you you, you no longer could be in that state. All right. Uh, it, you may be uncomfortable with. You know, all the requirements that the law require, which Israel always had an issue with law, statutes, and judgments, but the law still gave it to him. The law don't care about who got a problem with a law, statute, or judgment that he have presented, all right? Because, hey, the Lord is a solutionist, you see? So, as as we walk in a, in a uh, behavior towards God, you know, you want to be a solutionist yourself, man, because, hey, you know, in, in, in your affliction... You know, you remember your prosperity, all right? And in your prosperity, there's a forgiveness of, of, of affliction. That's why the Lord, like, look, the part of the growth and gaining things, all right, I got to make you uncomfortable, uncomfortable with getting it, you know? I'm going to read this again. This is a rock, 18 and 32. Take not pleasure and much good cheer. Neither be tied to the expense thereof. Because when you tie to the expense of something, you basically have uh, uh, entangled yourself with that, all right? And you're going to be totally focused on that, all right? So in our chair, our chair will make us so comfortable that we'll forget that this walk is uncomfortable, which will cause you to stagger, which will cause you to get behind, all right? Or to cause you to slow down, all right? Or not focus, all right? Because uh, focusing takes um, a, a great requirement of strength. All right. And when you put strength to something, you know, like when I'm working, sometimes I'm straight. I'm in an awkward position. All right. But I got to get comfortable with that position because this is the way I need to work on my truck. And there's no other position I can get in to work on a truck. So I'm using that as an analogy to say sometimes we're in this truth. This is what we have to do according to the scriptures, not what we want to do, because every man want to do the things that's comfortable to him. What man you know just go and do something uncomfortable, all right? That's not even, you know, to a man, I said, that ain't even logical, man. But here we do embrace that, man. But uh, it says, uh, 
Let me jump to 25, same chapter. When thou has enough, remember the time of hunger because the balance of things, all right, keep you all, uh, <clears throat> keep that debt, which you do have, understanding when you didn't have it, you use those thoughts and mindsets to what? Protect it. So there was a time we walked not in truth, all right? But in order to keep the truth, the Lord give us wisdom on how to handle that which we didn't have. You see, if you didn't have something and you have obtained it, in order to keep it, you got to continuously do that which you have uh, did to obtain it, all right? Or other words, hey, this is going to become a what? A lost cause, you see? It says, and when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need because the Lord have enriched us in spirit with the truth, all right? But it was a time where we was need, we were searching for truth and knowledge, man. It was all over the place, man, all right? We was completely just uncomf in an uncomfortable state with our thoughts, our ways, actions. We had no answers. We didn't have anything, man. But now, all right, the Lord puts us in an uncomfortable state while we're comfortable because we have the word and still have to uh, suffer the affliction of having the word, man. All right, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right, so the uncomfortability that comes with this comfortability of having the truth is is nothing short of of uh, amazing, man. Because in it is is just a it's just a you know it's just a major thing, man. When you really actually look at you know the way the Lord give us the great balance, man. In order to get out of us what's needed to get out of us, man. It says from the morning until the evening, the time has changed. This twenty six, and all things are soon done before the Lord, man. So from a hey, you could go from the morning to having this thing. To in the evening, just in a low state, to hey, the Lord judging you, man, in a matter of an eyes. And that's the, the roller coaster ride that the men of the Lord have to embrace, man. You know, this is part of the walk. When you start to evaluate all things as part of the walk, the walk becomes easier. It becomes simpler. All right, now, yeah, you know, trying things are not before us like debt, you know, uh, the things that have to come before us. But, hey, you know, there's a bracing time, all right? There's a season to embrace, all right? So our season is to embrace the things that are most uh, comfortable to us right now because they're going to get uncomfortable. And even practicing a way of doing things uncomfortably, man, outside of your normal way of doing things, a lot, and of course, it got to be according to the scriptures and righteousness. But like you say, old routines and patterns, man, you got to challenge that, man. All right, see if you could get in a different pattern, a, a, another way of doing things, man. All right, because all it's going to do is enhance your strength, man. All right, because there's no time to fail when adversity is on you, meaning that uncomfortable time or that period or season. All right. It says he that faint in a time of adversity, his strength is small. All right, because what helped him grow. All right. Once the uncomfortable period came, he forgot what uh, totally helped them grow, man. All right, he what? He 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 went away from it, man, because of the state he was in. All right, a state can break a man down, even though, well, a situation could break a man down, even though his mind state, all right, uh, uh, his mind state is still covered with the Lord, but he made you let that situation, you know, bust him up. That's why I say, give not over uh thy mind, um, to heaviness, man. All right. Give not over thy mind to heaviness because heaviness can trap you up, bro. It can get you. You see, so, you know, like I said, I'm just, you know, giving out scriptures to basically exhort brothers on how to remain and stay in space with that own, that uncomfortability, man. All right. Because, uh, <clears throat> you know, the scriptures tell you, give not thy mind over the heaviness and afflict not thyself in thy own counsel, man. Because nobody could break you down but you, which... You know, ultimately, the Lord used the thoughts in you to break you down. All right. So we know it's of the Lord. But that's when you're flicking yourself in your own counsel and giving yourself heaviness, man. It's going to trouble you. All right. But this is uh, Sirach 30 and 22. It says the gladness of the heart is the life of man and the joyfulness of a man prolonging his days. That's where the strength is at. All right. The joyfulness. But there's going to become a time where it's going to be bitter, all right, in a, in a pitiful time.
All right? But the Lord going to pity us, man. You see? You know, Lord willing, myself and you you other men likewise that are taking this thing in, you know, in sincerity and, and approaching it and pursuing it, all right, as, as the Lord going to, you know, continually be with us, man. Adding from us and subtracting. Because when the Lord add to you and then, you know, hit that subtraction, Jacob, whoa, what's going on, man? You know, I just need to keep getting the addition. But subtraction becomes, is, is the state which come, things may come uncomfortable because you'll feel like I need that. But if the Lord feel your soul, it's not needful for your spirit or your soul, it's going to be your sorrowful meat, man. Meaning you're sorrowful for it, but it needs to go, man. All right? It says, love thine own soul and comfort thine own heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. Because as I'm going to get, you know, in these scriptures, you know, Job, a lot of these men, David, they all dealt with sorrow, man, on a high level. You see? But sorrow didn't cast them off for their love for the Lord, do yet the Lord afflicted them, man. Affliction is no more than a trial and, and error for you, man. All right? Because a man, uh, reasoning is in his trial. All right? The way that what? His mind is set up, how he have grown and grew. It comes when it what? The t when, the, when the growing becomes uncomfortable for you, man. All right? We're like, oh, man, I just want to, you know, just, just go over here, man. I don't want to deal with it, man. But you got to deal with it. You see? It says, uh, this is Job 6 and uh, 9. Now I got to get Job when it's dealing with affliction. Because what boy better, uh, better account is it than that? Which all the men are, you know, great accounts. But, you know, Job is a is a, 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 sta uh, a staple of how to beat through affliction. All right? Job 6 and 9. Even that it would please our power to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. Then should I have yet comfort. Yea, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. That's heavy, man. You know, he said, then when the Lord be ready to cut me off and lose his hand, then should I have yet comfort. You know, and one would say, man, you fall out of the hands of the Lord. War is you. War is you that fall into the hands of the Lord. <laughs> you know? Because when you fall into the hands of the Lord, about to make you uncomfortable, man. Look, I just want to put this on you to show you what you are becoming a part of, man. That you may know that this exists in your walk, man. You see? Tough ape. Hey, tough times don't last. Tough men do. You see? It says... Then should I have yet comfort? Yea, I will harden myself in sorrow. You know, sometimes you got to harden yourself in sorrow. You got to leave your complaint upon yourself. All right? Hey, you make other men, some. you never know, you might make other men uncomfortable because you telling them about your own, uh, uh, the way you uncomfortable. Like, man, bro, I'm uncomfortable too. Remember the same afflictions are accomplished in your, in your brethren that are or in the world. The book of 1 Peter, man, the fifth chapter. All right? The same um, afflictions are accomplished in you that are in your bro your brethren. So, you know, hey, what are we beating at a dead horse, bro? We all uncomfortable here. We might as well get together, all right, in comfort, being uncomfortable. And that's what the men of the Lord do. Being uncomfortable in a world where righteousness don't exist. All right? Wickedness is all over the place. All right, the, the, the kingdom of heaven is not coming far enough. You're getting a short end of the stick on work hours. Come on, man. All right, this is the uh this is the lot of a man of integrity, man. You see? Because our strength is, is is nothing to the Lord, bro. So the Lord give us the things, all right, that's not to break us, but to make us, man. All right, that's just what it is, man. Approach it as such. This Psalms 32 and 4. It says, For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. So the Lord power is heavy upon this men, man, to continually do this work, man. The Lord got to put some fire behind our ass to make sure we're doing it. Or if not, we'll wax coal in our work, man. It says, my moisture is turned into the drought of the summer. Meaning the things that, you know, because this word, the water, this word, man, 
they it could feel dried up at times, man. You know, which we know that's it's not saying like oh it just we it done burnt out and went away. It's just about the travails that come with it, man. You know. So the law of discipline is, is heavy on us, man. All right? And, and, and sometimes your strength may evaporate like water in the summer heat. You see? Meaning what? It goes away quickly. It sucks the energy out of you, man. All right? But the Lord will take energy out you to, to restore you with more. <laughs> the Lord cold-blooded, man. You see? So don't let your droughts become as if the, the Lord not going to rewater you, man. You see? This is a... Uh, the Lord reward us with always comforting us with the word after he made us uncomfortable. The same thing that made us uncomfortable, which is in the Lord's word, he comforts you with the same thing. Matter of fact, let me prove that. This Psalms 119 and 50. All right. It says. It says. I'm going to read 49. Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. So the things that comfort us in our affliction are when we are uncomfortable. For thy word had quickened me. That what gives us the spirit, the strength known to push on, to keep going. All right. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word had quickened me. That's what comfort us, man. That's what keep us. You see? This is Matthew 5 and 4. And it reads, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. <laughs> All right? So if we uncomfortable now, we know there lies a way greater comfort to when we get that, we ain't going to never remember we was uncomfortable, man. You see? It said, blessed are they. That mourn. All right? Because we're mourning for righteousness sake, though. So let's not get it twisted. We just mourning because we could whine to the Lord. No, we're 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 crying and sighing that righteousness um come in this place, man. All right. To be well off, man. We're looking to be well off because for mourning, man. For mourning sake. You see? This is 2 Corinthians 1 and uh I read three. Blessed be our power, even the father of our blessed be Yahweh, even the father of our power, the Mashiach, the father of mercies, the God of all comfort. All right. And the Lord is a balance. If I give you comfort, comfort, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Whether it be in the body, in the brotherhood, in the world, I'm going to for for I have to give you a balance of demons for you to fight, man. The remain and serve me. Paul had a, Paul dealt with a, a thorn in his flesh that he may continually serve the Lord. That way he may humble down and humility and not be above the measure that was given to him from the Lord, man. That's the ultimate uncomfortable uh, situation to be in, man. Paul prayed thrice, meaning he prayed daily, all right? Do you understand that he prayed daily that the Lord take it away, but he didn't do it, all right? Because it was needful for his flesh. It says, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of the Most High, man. Of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. Let me read that again. Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. You see? That we may have to be telling men that come behind us, look, this is the uh, prepare thy soul for temptation when you serve the Lord. But when you show the Lord you could take uncomfortableness, the Lord give you comfort. You see? That's in a, in a, in a token of trying you. Who comfort us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of the Most High. All right? So when you are uncomfortable, that is the Lord looking at it like this is the comfort I'm giving to you. Take uncomfort, comfortability as comfort from the Lord. So with that, man, until the next time, I'm going to say shalom.